Rick Crawford is a former NASCAR driver that really established himself in the truck series. He ran it full-time from 1997 to 2009. He became a local hero and a man that gave back to the fans. Crawford contended for championships in the truck series at a time, but in 2018, an undercover sting operation uncovered the man he truly was. This is the story of NASCAR's most disturbing driver, Rick Crawford. But right before we get into the video, I do want to mention that I touch on some topics that may be disturbing for some viewers, so just be aware of that. If you're interested in learning about more about NASCAR, the good, the bad, and the ugly, make sure you check out some of my other videos. Anyways, let's get right into it. Richard Hoyt, or Rick for short, Crawford Jr. was born in July of 1958 in Mobile, Alabama. He began racing when he was very young. Skipping a bit ahead to 1981, at the age of 24, he won the track championships at both Five Flag Speedway and Mobile International Speedway. He would also go on to win two more track championships at Mobile in 1983 and 1984, as well as another championship at Five Flags in 1984. Rick was winning a lot in his mid-twenties, but his biggest accomplishment was just around the corner in 1989 when he won the Snowball Derby, a very prestigious race. Rick continued running local short tracks and big short track races across the country during this time and kept up racking wins around the southeast. In 1991, Rick went to NASCAR's Southeast Series where he'd make a name for himself. He won five races between 1994 and 1996 and finished a career best fourth in the 96 standings. After this season, Rick got an opportunity to drive in NASCAR's new series, the Craftsman Truck Series. Rick showed a lot of consistency in his early years in the trucks and even picked up a win in his sophomore season. He wasn't lighting the world on fire, he was always a step behind the big guys, like Sprague, Bickle, Hornaday, and Biffle. He was just consistent enough to keep a ride is all you could really say. Just top 10 after top 10, and just never really broke through. After his first 6 seasons, he still only had one win. However, he had accumulated 70 top 10 finishes. He even collected 12 top 5s and a second place in the final standings in 2002, but still winless. But it was right at this time in the early 2000s where the 43-year-old started to make a name for himself in the truck series. From 2003 to 2006, he was able to win a race every single year. In 2003, it was a huge win at Daytona, possibly the biggest race for the series. He was not as consistent as his 2002 campaign through these four seasons, so he never really had a true shot at a championship, but at least he was fighting for wins. 2006 would be the last time Rick tasted victory lane. I mean, he was 47 years old. He competed in three more full-time seasons, and he was just back to his consistent self, just not in victory lane. After the 2009 season, at the age of 50, Rick called it quits for full-time truck racing. Rick never made a start in the Cub Series, and only made two starts in the Xfinity Series. Interestingly, he didn't make these two starts in the Xfinity series until he was 52, a couple of years after he quit full-time truck racing. So in 2011, Crawford moved back to his home to manage Mobile International Speedway, a track in which he had won multiple track championships at in his early years. Through this time, the former NASCAR driver had a clear message of giving back to the track that got him to where he was and giving back to the local fans that supported him. In 2013, Crawford left his hometown to manage a new track in Montana. He'd also offer support to young drivers, helping in their development. I mean, Rick had made it. He had made a career in NASCAR and was a race winner. Him bouncing around, managing tracks was like taking a victory lap. He'd won the game of life. What else did the man need? He was living every racer's dream. Well, Rick was not satisfied. His darkest desires and secrets would be brought to light in February of 2018, when he was 59 years old. Also breaking tonight, Mobile native and former NASCAR driver Rick Crawford, convicted of trying to have sex with a minor. He now faces between 10 years and life in a federal prison. Rick got arrested after he was caught during an undercover sting operation. A federal agent posted a Craigslist ad posing as the father of a 12-year-old girl. The 12-year-old girl was just fictitious, just for clarification. It was just made up. She wasn't real. 
Rick saw the ad and messaged the undercover agent between February 10th and February 28th of 2018. They exchanged emails and texts in which Rick would ask for inappropriate photos, send inappropriate messages, and negotiate prices to have physical interactions with the daughter of the father. Rick traveled from Port Orange to Seminole County to meet the child and was then confronted and arrested by federal agents. So that's disgusting. And of course, like any predator you've seen on To Catch a Predator, Rick tried to argue that he believed the girl was of age, but it was just false. It was clearly stated that she was 12. A bond hearing took place in March, where he pleaded not guilty to the charge of enticement of a minor. The court then released Crawford on conditions of release. He would then be under home confinement until his trial. In August of 2018, Rick was found guilty by a federal jury in Orlando, Florida, of attempted enticement of a minor to engage in physical activity. In his sentence hearing in November, just a few months later, he was sentenced to 130 months in prison. In addition to this, he had to register as a sex offender, his media and computer access was restricted, he was fined $5,000, and ordered to participate in a mental health treatment program. Rick's case was brought as a part of Project Safe Childhood, a nationwide initiative launched in May 2006 by the Department of Justice to combat the growing epidemic of child exploitation and abuse. So, after this, nothing much really changed or happened. Of course, fans were enraged and disgusted. His image was destroyed and his relationships were as well. Besides trying to make himself seem innocent, he has not made any public statements since his arrest that I can find. Is this where his story ends? I mean, for now it is. Who would have thought that a man who helped so many people, gave back to the fans, was written in NASCAR's history books, would do something so bad. So I know this was a different topic than I usually discuss in my videos, but I hope you found it informative. I saw some people on Twitter talking about how they didn't even know this existed, so I decided to make a video on it. I don't think of this as promoting Rick himself, rather raising awareness for the issue at hand so we can all grow from it and be more well informed of the entire NASCAR scene. It's a sad story. Many of us watched Rick race. Although he seemed to be just another driver in NASCAR, he ended up committing a very disgusting act. Fortunately, Rick was caught by the sting operation, and they were able to stop him from committing even more. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.